Hi, my name is Mohamed Khalid. I'm an artist born and raised here in the UAE. Um, I look at my practice as looking for contingencies. Um, my practice starts with literally me uh, walking, running, driving, looking around for things to see. Um, I start with the process of exercises such as drawing receipts, routine patrolling, stealing corporate pen. I think, honestly, I don't count this corner that we see as a studio space. Uh, a studio space is more, I don't know, I don't know what a studio space is. As someone who likes to operate by looking at things and looking around my surroundings, I like to come back to wherever I can, which is either a cafe or a friend's house or a table. And that's where I can actually work on. And that's what I see as a studio space, something that is almost anywhere where tools can be carried or kept and I can work out of. Does the space affect my work? No, I think the way I kind of work with it is how, how I'm feeling and how that, that mostly affects my work. Um, there are days where I just don't feel like making anything and there are days where I'm so excited that even though I'm at a friend's house, I will carry all of my tools with me and work in one of their tables because it's, a, it's an energy that I want to get out. I didn't know what I wanted to, what career to pursue or anything and becoming an artist, um, really it just happened. Uh, I was, I, I, I think I'm quite skilled with uh, drawing so I found uh, one of the spaces in El Circle Avenue had an open call and they needed self-portraits and I had these drawings of myself and they were published on a magazine so that kind of showed me that, I don't know, art there was a chance in art and there's a chance for me being in art so now I kind of continue with it that way where I just make things for how I'm feeling and they somehow end up in places and I'm really thankful for that. My day starts with you know just waking up and I think the thing that excites me most is getting in my car and driving somewhere. I don't actually have an actual destination it's just that I like to go around uh, areas that I'm very familiar with and almost kind of start looking and thinking uh, about various topics and I think that's what the ritual has been, just me moving somewhere and looking. Of course one of the kind of rituals that I go through which is driving around and sometimes my car gets dirty and now it needs a wash. So when I'm not able to go to one of the closest car washes uh, I had to kind of find a new one and I found this one in Satwa uh, and it had the new uh, it had the new car washing mechanism that I needed, which is a tri-foam color. And I don't know why I'm interested in this idea of the tri-foam color, but it is something that led me to this car wash. And um, there's something interesting with the process of me and the car wash where me and this machine that helps me go uh, look around places, that it needs to be stopped, it needs to be cleansed, and now I need to remove everything that's inside of the car and kind of renegotiate with myself of what is important and what is not between me and the Enoch staff members. And uh, while they were cleaning my car, I looked to the right and I find this giant boulder uh, that says Enoch. And I found it like almost like a shrine uh, at the gas station that while we're all washing our car, there's this beautiful majestic rock that just says Enoch. That of course this rock comes from the mountains, but somehow it's here now in the gas station, it's part of the franchise, it has its own brand, it, kind of, it removed whatever native context it came from and now it's an Enoch rock, it's part of the gas station. And I, I almost also see the, the rock as a human being, uh, someone that has moved from another place and now has resided here but now claimed a new title uh, to themselves and, uh, and now it's like a, it's a monument in my heart. So. I kind of wanted to make it into a grander monument that people can have access to. So I started making these ceramic uh, souvenir versions of them. And it comes with a little postcard of me posing with the rock, almost like a Grand Canyon um, tourist photo. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's my relationship with this Enoch rock. While driving, I've been stumbling upon for years on this, uh, on these like palm trees that are dying. and. Growing up in, in Jumeirah, I always found, you know, we are surrounded by palm trees that would cover the streets and they were so luscious and erect and beautiful that 
um, in some parts of the neighborhood you would find these dead ones and I always found it really bizarre that that I, I could see a dead palm tree. It's almost as if I'm not supposed to see this thing. I'm only supposed to see it when it's in its most beautiful form. So when I found a dead palm tree, I couldn't stop looking that I would always start to document these dead palm trees because within a few weeks, the municipality will remove them at some point because it is not aesthetically pleasing for the city. Um, so in a way to kind of freeze up uh, or kind of um, hold this moment of the palm tree kind of existing forever, I started to make them into ceramics, uh, kind of capturing this, uh, this very melancholic moment of this dead palm tree gracefully holding itself as it's falling onto itself. Uh, and that's how the dead palm tree ceramics were born. So there are subjects in our everyday life that we can relate to. And I find myself, uh, I find a sense of myself in street cats a lot. Uh, because I also see street cats as like funners, these um, random characters in the city just roaming around and they are in, a, in, very, in every corner of the area somehow. And I feel like these cats collect information of our surroundings and I feel that's how I feel me and the cat are the same. We're acknowledging of everything that's around us but also we're invisible at the same time. And. Uh, there's something about the cats that when you look at a street cat, like I see there's a reflection of a human being that's also kind of looking for love and like stability in this very busy life. So the fact that when I go to Spinney's to buy groceries, I see this cat always there just waiting. And it, that's when, I guess that's when like it, this somehow counts as practice for me that I get to break from my day and interact with a cat that maybe I'll see tomorrow, maybe I won't, but there's an intimacy that I share with this creature that's also roaming around in the city. And that's how I started uh, kind of producing these cat drawings. So I would play with the cat, take these photos of them, and come back home, sit on this table, and start kind of capturing this moment of uh, this like ephemeral moment with this cat, because I don't know if I'll ever see it again. So in some of my days, uh, the, the one important routine for me is that uh, it involves catching the sunset and I find that a bit amusing that there's something about everyone in the like everyone over here or in the world that they want to go see this giant circle kind of going up and down and it becomes like this uh, I, I don't know a very important moment in everyone's life that uh, at 5.30 we're all at the beach and we're all waiting for this giant sun to go down and it's something I also enjoy looking at. I don't understand why. And currently on my iPhone, it says there are 991 images of the sun setting. I often relate to myself as a flaneur. Um, a flaneur is a French term of someone who just likes to loiter around. And I find myself often in this space really looking and reflecting on my own feelings or what's around me. And um, I just drive around almost in the same area looking at the same sights, the same sunsets, the same people, um, almost trying to keep track, uh, collecting all this information. So it's just something I can't seem to stop doing.